Hello there and welcome to or welcome back to my channel. In this video I have a mixed media scrapbook process to share with you with the Thompson's Craft Supplies design team and here I am using the May Perfect Gentleman kit. Um, this scrapbook process is quite a, what's an appropriate word, quite a solemn quite somber I suppose I kind of if I'm honest with you I got quite sad <laughs> when I was doing this layout but I will explain why in a bit let's uh, start off talking about the creative process so I chose this paper from the kit that one with like the line drawing on as my main paper and I'm just putting a layer of clear gesso on that quite a heavy layer of clear gesso there and then the other paper I was fiddling with just before then um was it's just one from my stash it's from one of those cheapy paper pads you know the um craft sensations or you know brands like that you pick them up in the works or the range and it's a vintagey themed one but I really liked I didn't like the whole paper very much but I liked it at the edge where there was that sort of uh scripty lettering and I like the color as well to go with this kit so I've decided to use that and sort of offset it with my main paper I'm using so that's why there I'm putting adhesive on the very on the left edges or the the very left and the bottom edge I'm putting the adhesive at the edge and then not on the other edges so to speak so as I say I can offset it like this so it's not a border going around the whole edge just something a bit different because usually I just add a border around the whole edge if I'm doing a border so yes and then I'm just obviously snipping off those excess bits so that the layout remains 12 by 12 and therefore will fit in an album so yes um left far too much footage in here it would seem i'm just cutting stuff off anyway um i also wanted to incorporate this die cut frame from the kit another kaiser craft thing here and then also the branding strip of the paper that i used i thought would be fun to include as well because i really like the little mustaches so i'm going to do some stenciling here with this stencil again from the kit this kind of pipe stencil and i'm using modeling paste for this just straight modeling paste because um I was going to colour over the top of it rather than mixing in the colour kind of thing. So the picture, to explain, I'll probably have to go back and forth explaining it, but the picture, um, which you can't really see at the moment, this is of my paternal great granddad. His name was George Robson Fairbairn and he was killed in action in the First World War in 1917. So obviously he died long before I was born and my granddad was only a baby when he died and as far as we know he and his father never met like his wife was pregnant when he was shipped off to war and he never saw his son so it's really very sad and you know tales of war are often sad like this but yeah it just it makes me sad thinking about it to be honest i'll talk about it again in a minute about what i do know about this man but yes, with my frame, I wanted to gesso that as well, knowing more mixed media was going on it. So I've put clear gesso around the edge of the, the framey part, and then I've put some heavy white gesso in the middle. Now, I did make an error. You can see on the left there where I've accidentally put something that was opaque drying on the frame. I totally forgot that my crackle paste is doesn't dry transparent. And I thought, oh, crackle paste, that'll look great on there. And then went, oh darn that's not the word i used but you know oh darn i've that's not gonna dry transparent so i had to go back later on to do something about that but you know mistakes we make them and then yes to color that modeling paste that stenciling i had done i'm going in with some sprays i've got dilution spray in the color melted chocolate and lindy's starburst in, 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 in cowabunga copper and I'm just spraying on there, letting it drip a bit, but not letting it drip all the way down because I didn't want it coloured where there wasn't stenciling. And I'm actually using a dry baby wipe. I often, after having using a baby wipe for whatever I've used it for, in my craft room obviously, not for any other uses, I will often keep one if it's clean enough because they can also be quite useful when they're dry as well. So I'm actually using it sort of as a sponge to move around the colour and have it quite faded and yeah but then I'm also going in with just big droplets of the colours both the Lindy's and the Dilutions just to have sort of a few areas of deeper darker colour and yeah just adding fairly big droplets and letting them move around the stenciled area themselves just letting them do their own thing as I said just to add a little bit more depth of color and stuff and somehow not entirely sure how this came about it's probably to do with the lindy's because they've got lots of colors in them to create the one color um 
but this green appeared in that area. But that's fine because, you know, that still kind of works with the whole thing there. Um, and then I went back in with that cowabunga copper in an attempt to cover up that my stupid mistake there. So, yes, I did that. And also then my, my spray bottle leaked. So that's why there's a couple of dots of it around. And then when all of that was dry, I'm just working out what part of the frame I need to put adhesive on. Because obviously, because I want to... I like to keep things I want to keep the part of the frame that I don't include in this layout so I'm just working that out so adhesive doesn't go on it and then I'm just cutting it off like that and I've cut it in a way that you know I haven't cut off one edge and then the other I've cut it so that I can use that frame right angle should I want to with that little branding strip um because it was white that was not appropriate for the tone of the layout the color tone that is so i'm going in with some distress oxide in dum -de dum the antique linen just to help the whole color theme and everything and just sticking that on just down there just a little area little, little thing going on there i thought if i didn't add other things to the layout other than just on the frame it would look a bit meh but obviously we didn't want that frame just white because that would look a bit silly. So I have gone in again with Distress Oxide in Antique Linen and then now in the colour Vintage Photo, which is an appropriate name for this, this layout given how old that photo is. So yes, going in with that. But then I didn't like the way I had you done it with the blending tool. It looked a bit blech. So I've just taken one of my aqua or water brushes, whatever you prefer to call them, and I'm just moving around the colour. Obviously, Distress Oxides are very water reactive, so you can do, you can kind of use them as watercolours almost, should you want to. So, yes, moved around the colour with that, and then I'm using my heat tool to dry it, and I'm also going to take that, again, the dry baby wipe, to lift up some of the colour, and that kind of gives it this sort of tea stain effect. I don't know if you, I don't know if you agree with that, but I quite like the effect. It's more vintagey and that kind of thing. Now I am playing with one of my new mixed media acquisitions, which is this Cosmic Shimmer Granite Paste. And I'm just going through, uh, going through, just using that stencil. That's a hunky dory stencil, the brick stone wall effect one. And yes, the granite paste comes in a couple of different colors this one is and i've got it written down i don't really know how to say it giallo giallo g-i-a-double-l-o i don't know it's kind of a brownie one basically a sandy brown um the other one i have is more of a gray very more much of a granite color now i picked this up quite cheap i just happened to stumble across them at a craft store the links i will provide for you will not be the same price because the local craft store i went to doesn't have a website but I don't think this is going to last very long. Like, I could just tell by the way I used it that that pot is going to empty quite quickly. You could just see me there, like, trying to save all the little bits. But So I might have to start mixing it with some gel medium or something to make it go a bit further. I don't know. I'll have to experiment with that. But then, what's the other thing I'm doing now? Oh, yeah, I'm using the Distress Crayon that came in the kit and just putting a bit of the crayon down, just straight down, and then again using my little aqua brush to move the colour around and make it a little bit more interesting and stuff, and just going around like so. And here I made a mistake. I put my photo down and started thinking about stamps and other embellishments and stuff, and I didn't realise that there was a big area that was still wet, and you can just see the photo there getting wetter and wetter and wetter as I play with embellishments, and I only noticed after a few minutes. I went, oh, flip! Again, didn't use that word, but printed the photo off again. I actually printed it bigger the second time. And I also printed off, I just typed this out in Word and a typewritery font, just some information about George, basically all the information I really know about him, really. And I distressed that again with the antique linen just to help it match the whole overall thing and it makes it look old and stuff. But yes, that's pretty much all I know about him. Private George Robson Fairbairn was in the fourth battalion north staffordshire regiment and he died on the 11th of december 1917 in northern france i don't know if he was wounded and died later on or if he was you know kia straight away i don't i just don't know we know so little about him and i think that's partially what makes me sad as well like I don't, I don't know who he was, what he was like, what his personality was like. I do know that his wife, my great-grandmother, 
I can't remember exactly how long afterwards, it was a year or so, she basically died of a broken heart. And whether you believe that's a thing or not, that's by the by, but she did. And so my granddad and his two elder sisters were raised by an auntie, I think. So that's also very sad. So, you know, there's no one alive who knows him or and hasn't been for a very long time. Because as I said, my granddad was a baby when when he's, his father died. So I just, I don't know anything about the guy. And it makes me sad. And the whole story makes me sad. And it's just, yeah, I don't mean to be all, you know, at you, but... It's quite a sobering thought, you know, but yes, I did manage to find when I was doing some research online, there's a website called, I think it's findagrave.com or something like that. I can't remember the exact name, but um, basically people all over the world go and take pictures of gravestones and upload it to the internet with as much information as they can. And then other people from around the world can then find family members gravestone so yes i found a picture of that because he's buried in dozingerheim i'm probably saying that wrong cemetery in belgium so i do have a picture of that unfortunately it's not a very good picture but these military cemeteries if you've ever been to one they are just huge so i imagine the person was kind of going just snap 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 taking all these pictures so i appreciate that they did that but anyways yes so Moving on from the slightly more depressing stuff. Oh dear. I would like to find out more about the guy, but the problem is the only way of doing it is Ancestry.com, it would seem, and they are not cheap at all. If anyone has a uh, Ancestry account and would like to find out for me, you're more than welcome. I don't know if that's really cheeky to ask, but yes. So the stuff I've done around the photo, I've used wooden embellishments from the kit. I've dyed them with the, again, the Distress Oxide and Vintage Photo. I started off using the blending tool on them and that wasn't right so I've actually sort of dipped them in the ink and that turned out quite cool. I've backed my little info information ticket thing that I made and I've sort of pulled it around the edges so it looks a bit older and I decided to include like a lot of words on this layout so I'm using the Tim Holtz clippings stickers and just there was a lot of appropriate ones there things like went off bravely um, in memory of for thy sweet love remembered I thought that would be appropriate because given what happened it was obvious that him and his wife loved each other an awful lot um, and yes I do go back and add quite a few more of those I've put in a little brad from the kit just at the top of that little info thing that I made because it kind of looks like it's pinned there and then I'm just adding a couple more embellishments around the page because it was just the way I'd done it with everything offset in a certain way, it was just too heavily leaning to the top right there. So I just wanted to add a couple more little bits down the bottom to just putting this little gear thing and then something in the middle. And I do add a tiny word to that as well because it looks a bit wrong, just the two circles together. Adding as well down the bottom left, just this little scrap of paper. One of, That's a scrap from one of the papers I used to back the photo. Distressing the edges again with the antique linen oxide i think yes or maybe the other one i'm not sure and just having it nice and ripped and put down there and then putting one of these this isn't a clipping sticker this is the ideology uh is it small talk um i can't read what it says because something on my screen is covering it up i'm sure you can read it and i also distress those again with either the vintage photo or the antique linen because white was just not right you know it's just it had to be distressed those alphas are from the kit and you guys know I'm not very good at titles so I just put remember. It might sound weird because obviously I don't remember him and no one really does but it's not, it's like to, to remember that he existed, he is my ancestor and he was there kind of thing so that's why I've gone with that and it's not, I haven't used the big alphas so it's still quite subtle. I've added more clipping stickers and I've also around the edge there I wasn't quite happy with how the two papers met so I'm just using my metal ruler just to sort of distress the edge a little bit I have to use the metal one because it was stuck at the very edge there was adhesive on the very edge of the paper so that's why you have to use the metal one because it's the only thing that has the sort of strength to push it and then I'm just finishing off with the distress crayon just coloring in little bits and then blending them in with my finger just because add a few little areas of interest and whatnot and there we go 
I am finished. So I'm really sorry if I've depressed you or I kind of depressed myself doing this layout. But again, it, it's meaningful and stuff. So yes. As ever, I will add as many links as possible in the description box. Uh, please uh, leave me a thumbs up or a com and or a comment if you have any questions or anything to say or whatever. I would really, really appreciate it. And other than that, I think I am done. So thank you again so, so much for watching. I am now going. Bye-bye.